Sydney looking directly at whatever was there. You know, Dr. Bernstein is uh, with us. Uh, he's, he's a urologist. He used to work over at the Walter Reed Medical Center. Walk us through what they're doing right now, and, and why does she have to spend three or four or five days there? Great question, Wolf. So I think right now they're making sure her pain is well controlled. Uh, she's waking up from anesthesia. She probably had a little bit of seizure. Uh, so making sure her pain is well controlled and monitoring her vital signs, uh, making sure that she's recovering and following the expected course uh, that, would, that would occur after this type of procedure. Are there complications? There always are complications. Anytime there's a procedure or a surgery, there's always a risk of complications, uh, including bleeding, uh, including infection, including pain. Uh, and so these are, these are things that the doctors, I'm sure, are prepared for. They're ex they've probably counseled her on ahead of time and prepared her for, and now they're taking the appropriate steps afterwards. But the facility there at Walter Reed, the physicians, the nurses, these are world class. Top notch, top notch. You spent, what, 13 years over there? I spent 13 years in the military. I did all my training over there at Walter Reed, and uh, nothing but the best. So she's in good hands, right? Great hands. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, Kate uh, is with us. She's an expert on First, uh, on first Ladies, Kate Anderson Brower. Talk a little bit about how other First Ladies have dealt with similar kinds of situations. Well, in 1987, Nancy Reagan had a mastectomy, and then Betty Ford famously had a mastectomy in the late 70s, where she uh, very publicly talked about breast cancer for the first time. Um, and there's also a really moving story about President Ford taking Marine One to visit her at Bethesda Naval Hospital and praying with their son Mike in the aisle uh, for her health. So I think it's common for the president to show up after the procedure, actually, because of the kind of hubbub that is made about the presidential motorcade or wherever the president is going. So it makes sense to go after the procedure is done. But it's certainly a very private uh, thing. But many first ladies have had to undergo surgery. Laura Bush in 2007 had surgery for a pinched nerve. This is probably more serious than that and is more similar to what happened in the 80s. And unlike a president, uh, they don't really provide a lot of the medical information as far as first ladies are concerned. That's true. I mean, they weren't elected, right? So there is this feeling that they should be given a certain amount of privacy, and especially this first lady who is so private. Um, that's why I was very surprised that they came out and talked about this today. It was really refreshing. Well, what, what about that, Sanjay? Were you surprised? Um, yeah, I, I guess uh, as well, you know, I was surprised that they, we had the information that we did have. It came out, obviously, when she's still in the hospital. You know, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reporter, right? I always want a little bit more information. We still don't know exactly what it was. We know it was a benign process, a benign condition of the kidney that required embolization. I think that uh, a lot of times um, when you hear a benign condition of the kidney, uh, you think of something like a cyst, uh, which is what I first thought, but then that's not something that's typically treated by embolization. So it keeps, we keep coming back to this question, what exactly is it that was treated? And also, how do you reconcile the fact that it's a pretty minimally invasive procedure that she had done today? How do you reconcile that with the fact that she's uh, going to stay in the hospital for as many days as she is. Um, typically, it's overnight, uh, you know, just to monitor pain, make sure there's no complications or infection. Um, we're hearing to the end of the week that the First Lady is likely to stay in the hospital. Um, just a couple of questions still, I think, that I'd like to have answered. But to your question, I think, yeah, I was surprised to, to get as much detail as we did get. Yeah, it's, it's, to me, I was surprised when... Uh, Dr. Bernstein, you're an expert in this area, that she's going to be spending all these days in the hospital. Right. Uh, you know, a couple of days, uh, as, as Sanjay alluded to, sometimes you could go home on the same day. Uh, for this type of procedure, some days stay, stay a few, few days longer. Uh, and that varies from situation to situation, case to case. I think, obviously, there's a little bit of luxury uh, at, at the military medical center in, in Bethesda, where uh, she has a private suite. There's security there. Uh, the, the nurses and the staff there, um, probably more, not quite what you would envision a typical hospital room would be like for you or I. What would have been the symptoms, Dr. Bernstein, that would have caused her, you know, I'm feeling a little pain. What would she need to go through in terms of radiology or whatever uh, pictures in order to determine she needs this procedure? Great question. Again, not being part of the team and not knowing exactly what the condition was, uh, I suspect that she may have had some discomfort, may have had some pain in her abdomen. Uh, again, with the doctors maybe not being clear of what it was, they would have uh, suggested some imaging such as an ultrasound or a CT scan or even an MRI to try to determine what the cause was. And then uh, they made the determination, found whatever this issue was in her kidney, determined that that was the, 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 the potential cause of her symptoms, if she did have any symptoms, uh, and then developed a treatment plan from there. Any final word? Well, I mean, I think this is a first lady is very calculated. She she understands. She likes to know all of her information. She keeps a very tight knit staff, a tight knit group. Um, she's very detail oriented. I'm not that surprised that she's opting to stay 
uh, probably under medical advice as long as she can, despite what people may say or question. This is also First Lady is very independent, acts independently of her husband uh, and other, you know, past administrations that we've seen. So I, I'm certainly not surprised, one, that we got just a tiny sliver of information and two, that she's going to stay um, and do what's probably best advice for her. Good work all around. And we, as I say, we wish her only, only the best. A very, very speedy recovery. Uh, we'll have more on the story later. But